Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA A Plus certification training course. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to discuss PC preventive maintenance best practices and techniques. That's a mouthful. We've got a lot here because it's coming from both our 220-601 and our 220-602 exams. From the 601 exam in section 1.4, we need to understand how to perform preventive maintenance on personal computer components. And in our 602 exam, section 1.3, we need to know how to identify and apply common preventive maintenance techniques for personal computer components. There's a lot to talk about here. And we're going to go through quite a bit. We're going to talk about the process you go through when doing maintenance. And we're going to talk about specific maintenance techniques in all of these cases. We need to think about the environment, how we would maintain an external case, display devices, power devices, input devices, storage devices. And finally, we'll talk about thermally sensitive devices cooling, airflow, things such as that. So there's a lot to talk about in this module. So we'll start with the maintenance process. Whenever you're doing any type of maintenance on a personal computer system, there's a number of steps you go through during the maintenance process. The first thing you want to do is look at it and listen to it. If you're maintaining a personal computer and you walk up and you notice when you sit down at the computer that the computer is making a humming noise or a buzzing noise, or you look at it and there's some lights blinking on the front of the system, you're going to want to take notice to that. That's relatively unusual to run into that situation. So you're going to want to find out more about what's going on. Is this something just giving us some information about it? Perhaps there's something relating to what we need to do with our maintenance that would solve this buzzing issue as something in the way of the airflow, for instance. Or is there a problem with a component inside of it? A normal part of most maintenance processes is also updating drivers and firmware. Drivers that change a lot very often need to be updated, like video drivers. There's very often updated video drivers. If somebody has a, a system that is very important, they want to get updated drivers for their keyboard, for their mouse, for their video, for their drives, and other components inside of their systems. And especially if it's a system that has specialized use, such as scanners, those new drivers are coming out all the time. So you want to be sure that you're up to date with all of your drivers and your firmware in those devices. Preventive maintenance is usually something that you schedule. You want to be sure that if the manufacturer says you should do this every three months, perhaps we need to schedule that so that we know that every three months we're performing that preventive maintenance. This is one of those situations where you're taking care of things beforehand so you don't have to spend a lot of time and a lot of money afterwards when things go bad. Whenever we're working with devices, printers, computers, or whatever it is, we want to be sure we're using the correct repair tools and the right cleaning materials. If you're using the wrong cleaning materials, you may end up drying out and cracking plastics. You may end up smearing inks that are on devices. And you may end up damaging some of this hardware. So you want to be sure that the tools that you have are appropriate for what you're doing. You can always refer to the manufacturer's guidelines. They'll tell you exactly what you should be using for that particular piece of equipment. And finally, we want to be sure that we have the proper environment for doing our maintenance. You may not be able to do some preventive maintenance out on a floor where people are working. You may need to bring that back into an environment where you can control the static, where you can control the power, or it's a lot different. Or this may be something you can do at someone's desk. If you're cleaning a keyboard or a mouse, you may not need to take that back. The important thing to remember is that you have the proper environment and that you're first and foremost safe at what's going on. And secondly, you're not getting in the way of everyone else who's trying to get their jobs done. If at all possible, many organizations will have a spare system and they'll swap out a keyboard. They'll have a clean keyboard and they'll just replace the keyboard and take the old one away, clean that one up, and then go to the next place so that everybody always has the, the cleanest and most maintained uh, hardware and software, but you're also making sure that they're as effective as they can be at doing their job. There's a number of preventive maintenance techniques we should consider, a big long list that we were talking about. So let's start with the environment. What should we think about when doing preventive maintenance in the environment around us? Well, we've already had an entire module where we discussed electrostatic discharge. And I wouldn't have brought this up again if it wasn't really important. Uh, static can really cause a lot of problems with your hardware. And it can cause issues with uh, completely either completely destroying hardware or making it so that it only works intermittently, which is even almost a, a worse problem because those are very difficult to troubleshoot. So when you're working with devices, make sure that you are grounded properly and you're taking all of the proper ESD precautions into account. Another part of the environment you want to be very sensitive to is electromagnetic interference, or EMI. 
magnets and computers, they don't get along that well. Usually magnets are something you want to keep as far away as possible. I have had situations where in a customer's cube, they've had the on the metal cabinets around there, they put a lot of magnets up, which is makes it for a more comfortable work environment. But you want to be sure that they're aware that those magnets don't come anywhere near your computing systems. They can damage your displays. They can damage your computer. They can damage the media, the magnetic media that you happen to have lying around. So make sure that those, those uh, USB keys are far away from any type of magnets or any type of motors or anything else that would cause cause electromagnetic interference in your environment. You also want to be sure that these very important computer systems and printers and devices are running with the proper amount of power, that they're connected perhaps to a UPS or to a surge suppressor. In many large buildings, they have a, an entire building on a uninterruptible power supply. Or you may find that everybody's plugging into individual surge suppressors. It just depends on how the environment in that building is set up. You probably don't want to plug directly into power. Computer systems are very sensitive to any type of surges in power. So having a surge suppressor there can certainly save you some time and some money later on down the road. An important part of the environment, and we're going to talk about this also later, is airflow. Airflow is extremely important with computers because they get very warm inside. And you'll find, especially with laptops, that if they are kept clean, they will perform much better. Laptops especially, because as laptops get hot, the laptops are designed to slow down the processor so that it doesn't overheat that very small area of the laptop. So what you'll find is once you clean out all of the dust and things that are blocking the airflow in a laptop, suddenly your laptop runs faster. And that's because you've maintained the proper amount of airflow. In most environments, you don't have to worry too much about air quality. But there will be circumstances where there is a very humid area. Perhaps your computer systems are kept on the floor of a manufacturing facility. And you don't have a lot of control over the quality of the air. In those cases, you want to put something in place that can either filter the air as it's going through your systems, or you just make sure that you maintain those a little bit faster than others. There was a situation where I was brought a computer system that wasn't working. And when I opened it up, inside the computer, was a lot of yellow dusty uh, uck. I didn't I don't know exactly how to describe this, but if you go out to Google and you type in cigarette computer, you'll get an idea of what I found. This was somebody who had a closed in office, they had a they smoked a lot, and all of that smoke and all of that tar and all of that nicotine gets into the inside of your computer. The entire computer on the inside was yellow. It was a it was a yellow computer. So you that's a situation that was pretty extreme. We had to really clean that one out. And ultimately, there wasn't much we could do for that system other than clean it and hope that it was going to continue until it fell over. That really brings up a good point about dirt and dust. It can really be an evil part of the environment, whether your computer's just sitting on the floor all day or whether it's in an environment like a manufacturing floor where there's always going to be dirt and dust. You're going to want to make sure you maintain that and keep that dirt and dust clear from your computer systems. When we talk about cleaning the outside of your computer, you want to be sure that you're using something like neutral detergent. You'll see this written up in the manufacturer's manual about cleaning the outside. You don't want to use cleaning liquids that are ammonia-based, that have very harsh chemicals in them. They may tend to either dry out the plastic that's on the outside of these systems, or they might smear some of the inks that are on these systems. You don't want that to happen either. Normally, on the outside of your systems, you want to avoid isopropyl alcohol. Uh, isopropyl alcohol is great to clean out uh, the individual uh, tips of the components, the connections inside of your computer. But it's not really something that's good to use on the external case. You also want to be sure that you're vacuuming out some of these pieces. If you look at the back of the computer where the vent is, where your fan is blowing the blowing the, the air into your computer so that it can all blow through, you may find that there's a lot of dust there. So a vacuum is perfect for that. This happens to be a vacuum called a data vac that's designed to vacuum but also has built into it some anti-static properties and components so that not only is it a great vacuum, but it's also very safe to use on computer systems. You don't generally want to use compressed air for something like this because the dust tends to blow all over the building, all over the room. You're actually creating more, more of a problem then. You want to be sure just to suck that up if it's on the outside of your computer system. 
when you're working with display devices and you're working to clean those devices, you want to be very careful, especially when you're around these display screens. The screens themselves, whether it's a CRT display or whether it's the newer LCD displays, you want to be very careful about how you're using those and how you're working with them. These devices uh, are something we're looking at all day. So we want to be sure we're not scratching them or damaging them in any way. If you have ever seen a screen that has been um, has a magnet near it. You'll see part of it is faded. If you've seen LCDs that have been pushed on very hard, the LCDs themselves will break, and that liquid will create a, a, a splotch on the screen that you just can't get rid of. You have to replace the whole LCD. So when you're cleaning, be very careful and make sure you're using a cloth that is not going to have any type of abrasiveness to it. Also, these display devices, especially on these older cathode ray tube devices, get very hot and they require a lot of ventilation. So make sure that things aren't stocked on, stacked on top of them or on the sides of them. And you'll be able to feel the device and see how warm it is. You'll have a pretty good idea, based on the other CRTs in your environment, what you can expect or should expect for a temperature with those. This doesn't generally tend to be a problem on LCD monitors, primarily because they're so small, it's hard to stack anything on top of them. You just want to be sure that the screen themselves doesn't have anything that might push against them or crack that LCD screen. Also, when working on a device, especially doing maintenance of the device, you want to be sure you have the proper power devices configured for your systems. And this is an example of a surge protector and a UPS all in one. This is a 750 watt UPS system made by APC. It even has other jacks on here, so you could plug into perhaps a cable system. Some of them also have phone line connections or network connections. You want to be sure that you're protecting the power input onto your computer, because generally computers and Printers and monitors are very sensitive to surges and that power coming through. You also might want to check the power load. If you're in an older building or a building that the power you're just not quite certain about, you may want to check the electrical ratings of all your power strips, all of your surge protectors. Make sure that it has the, the proper amount of amperage and wattage to be able to handle, handle the load that you would put into that device. Many of these backup systems, UPS systems, these battery backup systems have circuit breakers in them. Even on surge suppressors, you'll see this. And the whole suppressor might turn off if there's a surge that just can't handle so that it's protecting whatever happens to be plugged into it. And of course, you can always bring your multimeter and plug it in and make sure you're seeing the proper amount of voltages on these systems too. Very important that you keep these power devices well ventilated and well cooled. The last thing you really want to do is overload the power that's being supplied to your devices. And not only is this important, it's really, really important that you this is in the clear. It's off to the side. There's nothing stacked on top of it. It's not shoved up in a lot of other things. This should be by itself, and you should have very clear markings and where this should be. And it should be uh, a place where it's well ventilated and well cooled. Preventive maintenance on input devices can be one of the most annoying things you'll run into, primarily because you'll find a lot of things like this, popcorn. This is where you start to get into some really gnarly types of things when you start working with things like keyboards. This is where I talk about cleaning all the popcorn kernels out. This is where compressed air can actually help. You take your keyboard outside, because you can disconnect it, obviously, and take it somewhere else. And you turn it upside down, and you shake it. and you push compressed air through it. If you're someone who, who works on their computer a lot and you're in front of your keyboard and you happen to eat in front of your keyboard, you'll notice you'll get a lot of crumbs in there. And that's a good way to get some of those popcorn kernels and things out of there. Often you may have to take the keycaps off of it. Most of the keycaps on your computers will pop right off. You can store them separately. And many people even clean the inside of the keyboard. I know now that's, that's getting into more of a, a time cost situation. Does Is it worth it to take this keyboard out and clean out all the inside and put it back together? If it's a higher end keyboard, perhaps a wireless keyboard, it might make sense to do that. If it's an older, less expensive keyboard, maybe it's time to get rid of that one and get a new one. Also, you want to look at the mice that you're using. Older types of mice use roller balls. You don't see many of them anymore, but they are still out there, especially in older systems or servers that aren't often touched. And those roller balls need to be clean because they collect a lot of dust. Also, optical mice, even the, the ones we use today, tend to get very dirty on the outside because we're always touching them. And so it may be useful to clean those off with some mild detergents so that it looks just like new whenever you start using it again. Well, preventive maintenance isn't just about cleaning the outside and the inside of the hardware you have. You also want to think about 
cleaning up your storage device. Obviously, I'm not talking about taking the top off of your hard drive and scrubbing that hard drive off. We're talking about cleaning it up with the software you have. And built into Windows is something called a disk defragmenter. On the newest versions of Windows, this is something that runs uh, automatically after hours. But on older systems, you may find that you have to do this yourself manually. And what that does is whenever files are stored to your hard drive, they're often stored on many different sectors. And what this disk defragmenter will do will, is take these, these fragmented files, and it will free space off so that all your files can be contiguous. They can be all in one row together. And whenever you're accessing the file from that point forward, it becomes a lot more efficient. Your drive doesn't have to move around a lot. It's a time motion study. So disk defragmenters can often make your system run faster, and all you've done is run this defragmenter utility. There's also a disk check function. You'll see this in Windows as well that allows you to check the disk for any file inconsistencies. It checks the index of the disk. It checks what happens to actually be on your disk and make sure that everything syncs up. If somebody's having a problem with their files, this may be a good way to just check the disk and make sure everything is exactly the way that it should be. Finally, when we're looking at storage devices like optical drives, CD-ROMs, DVD-ROMs, and readers, writers, and of course tapes, you want to be sure that they are clean. Usually there are cartridges that you can get, both a dry and a wet type of cartridge uh, for your tape, tape drives themselves. You also, if you're working a lot with tape drives, the types of swabs that you would use are made of foam or they're fabric that, that has no dust in it. You know, those are very sensitive. Those devices are very sensitive to dust. They, we want to keep those as clean as possible. So you want to be sure you're using the type of cleaning materials that the manufacturer specifies. And it, it, we mentioned earlier that there were times not to use isopropyl alcohol. This is one of the times you definitely want to use it because it will clean off these areas very nicely so that they can read and write the information as as easily and efficiently as possible. Computers are devices that get very warm. They are thermally sensitive. The hotter they get, the less effective they're going to be for you, especially motherboards. And you want to be sure whenever you're doing preventive maintenance on these devices, check the fan. Is the fan spinning? Is it spinning cleanly? Is it clean? Is there any dust on it that we need to clean off? When it spins, does it make any noise? That might be indicative of a problem. So you want to check that and make sure that it's running very well. You also want to check the CPU itself may have a fan right on top of it. And that CPU fan and the heat sink on top of that should also be spinning, should also have no dust associated with it. It should also be able to run properly. There's some free software you can download that monitors all these different temperature sensors inside of your computer. The one that I use is from a company called CPUID.com. They have some great free utilities. They also have some more uh, professional utilities that you can purchase. But it's great that they have some free ones. If you just want to check out the, uh, the temperature that's inside of your computer, this is a very easy way to do it. Other thermally sensitive devices inside of your computer are things like adapter cards. Some adapter cards, especially video cards, have fans on the cards themselves. So those moving devices, you need to check for dust and make sure they're working properly. And sometimes just moving the cables, the ribbons and the cables that are inside of your computer so that the air flows better can have a dramatic improvement on the amount of temperature and the heat that's used and put off and cooled by your system. You also have situations where the memory inside of computers can get very warm. Usually these are on the highest of the highest end systems, but they do make heat sinks that wrap around your memory modules. You can see a picture of one here. These may also be called heat spreaders because all they do is sit on top of those memory chips and spread the heat out over this metal. You usually don't need those. You'll rarely see these on most systems because the manufacturers have designed the memory that goes in them so that they won't get that hot. And usually it's only when you're overclocking or you're pushing these systems to the ultimate that you're ever going to have a situation where you'll need a memory heat sink or a heat spreader. In review, we've looked a lot at PC maintenance, not only at the process itself, but specific techniques that we can use to make sure that our environment, that our external cases, display devices, our power, our input, our storage, and finally, our thermally sensitive devices are taken care of. If you'd like to look at many more free videos, uh, participate in our message boards, and much more, you can visit our website, freeaplus.com.